Good morning, Victory Church. We are so excited to worship with you again online. As we said last week, we want you guys to worship where, exactly where you are. We're gonna worship here. The presence of God is here. We know the presence of God is with you. We've been praying over this set. We've been praying over you. So join us in worship this morning.
to fear the storm just because I hear it roar. I don't want to fear the storm. I don't want to fear the storm.
God, we thank you so much for being our Father. And you're so good at what you do. You're a father to the fatherless. And you're everything that we need. You're everything that we needed yesterday. You're everything that we need right now in this moment. And you'll be everything we need tomorrow. And for everything else that we have to face, God, you are good. And we thank you for that, Lord. We praise you, we worship you, we honor and adore you. You're the only one who's worthy. Thank you, Jesus, for meeting with us and being with us. We love you, in Jesus' name. And all the church said, amen, amen. I don't know about you guys, but I am ready to get into the word, so let's go. Hey guys, good morning. As we're transitioning out of time of worship, I just want to welcome you to Victory Church. And we know that we're not doing this in our traditional format, but one thing that we also know is that this is new and this is fresh, and we're just excited that you're having an opportunity to be at home, be with your friends and with your family, and hopefully less than 10 people, and you're practicing a little social distancing. Um, But right now what we want to do is we don't want you to have any distance and and allowing this to reach people. So we want you to click share and also just like the message. Allow this to reach out to your friends and family because one thing that we do know is that this message is gonna impact people's lives. As Pastor Brian's gonna bring a word today that we just believe is gonna give something fresh to you. It's gonna provide just a new stream of life to you as we're in this series called Family Matters. Also, we wanna provide you with a few updates this morning. One being Growth Track. And uh, one thing that we're about to do with Growth Track is we're releasing it in an online format. And we know that's completely new, but we're so excited about it. And if you don't know what Growth Track is, it's just our way of explaining what Victory Church is. And we do it in three different steps. Step one, just the purpose and the vision of Victory Church. And we walk you through that. What are we doing? What is God calling us to do um, in and through the church? Two is really, it's going to be you discovering something new about you. And that means discovering your spiritual gifts. And many of you may already know what God's called you to do, um, but we believe that He's not only going to allow you to do it in the church, but also outside of the church in your work with your family and with your friends. And then step three is going to be discovering your leadership. Because one thing we firmly believe here at Victory Church is you don't have to be on stage. You don't have to lead a team to be a leader. And so we want you guys to understand what it means to be a leader at Victory Church and what it means to be on our dream team. So if you any of you are interested in jumping into Growth Track, please comment below because what we want to do is we want to follow up with you, begin to get you PDFs so that you can follow along with the videos. Um, we're just excited, we're passionate about it, and we can't wait to get you on to the Victory Team. One other thing is Mixtape. This was a sermon series that we were about to jump into before um, all of the pandemic kind of kicked off. And one thing we want you to know is that sermon series is not gone it's still right around the corner and we're ready for it and it's going to be an action packed and really what mixtape is is we're going to be preaching through some secular songs that maybe you grew up listening to and really just show you how god can use those songs to do phenomenal things and works in people's lives we're going to have our band play the different songs each and every week and also we're going to have merchandise it's going to feel like you are coming to a concert Each time that you show up at church, we're going to have t-shirts, hats, hoodies. Um, We'll probably have food and all these different things that will make it feel like you're walking into a concert. So get excited about it. Um, Continue to talk about it with your friends and with your family. Even right now, just begin to letting people know about it so they'll be ready um, and waiting to come to Victory Church whenever we kick off this series. Another thing is we are about to head into Easter and our hope and our prayer is that we're going to be in our building by Easter. But even if that doesn't happen, we have something phenomenal and just really exciting that we're going to be able to do through the online format. Um, But continue to pray with us. And as we begin to find out more things as it's coming down the pike and as things are released from the CDC, we will let you guys know updates about what our Easter service is going to look like here at Victory Church. The last and final thing is we do not want to block you from a blessing that God has in store for for you. So what we want to do is we want to provide you with an opportunity to give. And we are going to give you three different ways. Um, Unfortunately, we can't do it the old school way where we just passed the bucket today. Um, But you can go to tmvictory.com. You can also go to uh, the mobile app. And through the mobile app, it'll connect you um, to our online giving. And also, one of the favorites is text to give. You can just type in the phone number, text us the amount that you want to give, and we will connect with you in that way. We are so excited about releasing this message to you this week. Right now, go ahead and find a seat. Get ready as Pastor Brian's about to bring a message that's going to transform your life. This day and age to read any good news. 
Words on the newspaper page And love and tradition of the grand design Some people say it's even harder to find Well then there must be some magic clue Inside these gentle walls Cause all I see is a tower of dreams Real love bursting out of every scene Days go by It's the bigger love of the family Hey, good morning Victory Church my name is Brian Hogwood. I'm the executive pastor here at Victory Church, and it is an absolute honor to have you with us for our online service. Uh, welcome to my house. As you can see, I'm at home, and uh, you're most likely at home when you're watching this. That's kind of our new norm right now as we are quarantined. Uh, but what we do know is that God's Word is living and active, and so it is going to meet you right where you are at, uh, right where you need it to meet you, which is incredible. We don't have to be in the same room for God's Word to be powerful and meaningful and to shift our perspective. And so that's what we're talking about really as Pastor started a sermon series last week called Family Matters. And uh, we're spending more time right now with our families maybe than we ever have. Maybe some of us are like, we got to stop spending so much time together. You know, I don't, I don't know. I know you're maybe watching your kids. You have young kids and you're with them all day long. Look, we're going to talk about prayer today. I know that you need prayer and I need prayer. And we'll pray for patience and kindness and everything else that you need in order to get through this quarantine. Uh, but the truth of the matter is, is that our family does matter and we love them and we care for them. But sometimes we need to shift our perspective on certain elements of it, whether it's uh, the idea of our marriage or it's the idea of our finances or the fact that we need rest. Like once in a while, we need rest. Right, women need rest. Man, you got to take care of your kids sometimes and uh, let your lady have a rest. She's been with them all day long because all they can think about is saying the word mom, 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 mom. No more. I'm not going to say it. I'm sorry. I'm done saying the word mom. Uh, I just said it again. Whoops. My bad. Anyways, so the truth is, is that we, we have a certain thing that's been set in place, set in motion. There's a rhythm to our life. And uh, this has been a cool way to kind of pause that and kind of reevaluate some things and set some new things in place. And so in this series, we're going to talk about these wells. Pastor talked about eight wells last week that are life-giving, that that, that have water in them, but they're not being utilized. Water is a symbol for life. And these wells have been, they've been covered up. They've been covered up. The reason they've been covered up is because uh, of unuse. So like maybe like, for example, one of them is prayer and fasting. So maybe you used to pray, but now you don't. And the reason why is because you've just been in the rhythm of life, just the regular routine of go, go, go. And now you're too tired or you're too busy. And so it, it doesn't have a spot on your to-do list, uh, unfortunately, for the day. Uh, or maybe you're like most Americans and you're like, I'm going to pull myself up by my bootstraps and I'm going to get this done and I'm going to just charge ahead. And, and God's like, no, please, stop. I, I can help you with this. If you'll just come to me, if you'll just let me take on this burden, this stress, this worry, this concern, and I'll help you walk through this. And so I, I hope that through this series, we can look at these different wells and get a, a change of perspective, a shift in perspective, which will also change how we view our kids and our wife and our husband and our family as a whole, our circle, our sphere of influence, the people that are around us most, because um, we need it. We really need it. Maybe the well isn't just covered up because you don't utilize it anymore. Maybe it's new. Maybe you're new to this whole Jesus thing, this whole journey. Maybe you're new to marriage or new to handling finances or you're just young. You know, I mean, maybe you just haven't experienced it yet. And so we want to we want to tap into some of these wells and, and, and have you do some of the work with us as we dig to uncover the life that is there that you can implement, that I can implement, that will change how we do this thing that we call life. And so today I want to talk about two. I want to talk about the prayer and fasting. We're going to exclude fasting for now. Not that it's not important. It is incredibly important. And uh, I believe personally for me, fasting is something that, that I have to do. I feel God calls me to fast all the time. And, and sometimes I'm really good at it. And sometimes I'm not because sacrificing things is tough. It's very challenging. 
Uh, but I want to talk about prayer and then and I'm going to tell you why in just a second. And then I want to talk about worship. Okay, it's praise and worship. We're going to put them together. Uh, but praise and worship, I want to talk about that and, and, and un un uncover the life that exists there for you and for those around you. And I want to talk about prayer. And I want to talk about the life that's there that we can tap into that, that will change you and the people around you, which is super cool. But reason why I want to talk about prayer uh, and, and one, let me say it like this. If I had to pick out of all eight, I believe that prayer is the most essential. And the reason for that is, is that prayer is the one thing that we know when we look across scripture that really moves the heart and the hands of God. I mean, we see it all over the place throughout scripture, but I'll give you two stories. So you have Jericho, the march, right? Where they go around the wall six times, silent, but they're still praying. We know this time now as a prayer walk. People still do them today where they may walk around a school and pray for it, believing for God's blessing over it and safety and uh, protection over the, the minds and the, the hearts and the souls of the kids and the, the, the teachers there and that the teachers would, would come with confidence and, and be able to teach the, the curriculum well and you know whatever the kids may be like praying over the principal and and praying over um, the teachers and the students and everybody there and so they'll walk around and they'll pray for this this particular school uh, we did one when we were in Detroit Michigan we actually walked from the church we were currently at to the church we believed that we would have so the building that we believed we would have that was vacant right and all along that walk we prayed that God would move on our behalf Okay, so that's, that's one situation or one time in the Word where we see it, right? Where they walk around, they're given strict order, and they follow these orders. Now, you've got to think that some doubt and some possible fear and some uh, uh, un, uh, you know, insecurities and things like that were happening for six times. For six days, they were walking around this thing, and they, nothing was happening. And they were believing that the walls were going to fall down, but they're praying for it. And so they're probably even praying, God, help me with my unbelief. <laughs> that this can happen, that you will come through, that we will overtake uh, this area, right? That the walls will come down. And so on the seventh time they go around and uh, they, the, the trumpets go off and they, 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 they let out a, a praise, right? A, a, a yell and the walls come down. Now, another time is when, uh, when Joshua needs for the sun to stand still. Wow. Huh. Asking for a little bit of a prayer, huh? <laughs> like, wow. You want the sun to stand still? Wow. What is it though? When I hear that, I think of impossible. I think of like, that can't, that can't happen. You know, I can't even ask for that. That seems like too big or too personal. But I want to pause for a second and kind of just slow down and say, what is it for you that you need God to do that seems impossible? Maybe something that you've been battling with since you were 12 years old. What is it? Maybe it's just a job right now. I mean, people, I know people who have lost their job, unfortunately, due to what's happening right now with the coronavirus. Maybe that seems impossible right now. Maybe it's your marriage. Maybe it's your finances. Maybe it's an addiction that you have that you're fighting. And it seems impossible to break. You've tried. You just can't get past it. What is it? Because Joshua had the boldness and the confidence to say, hey, God, I need this. This has to happen. If this doesn't happen, this is not going to be good. I need the sun to stop moving, to freeze. And God did it. It moved his heart and it moved his hands. It moved him into action. And I want you to know that if you're not spending time talking to Jesus, the one who loves you, who is for you and only wants the best for you, you're missing out on a great opportunity to see God do something in you and through you. You're, you're missing out on an opportunity for a, a complete shift in perspective because that's what prayer does. It changes our perspective. It may not change our circumstance all the time, but it definitely change our perspective. And sometimes that's more important. Sometimes that's really what we needed was a change in perspective. Let me share with you some personal stories of prayer. 
I share with you some scripture. I share with you some stories from the Bible. Let me share with you some personal stuff. My great-grandma Mimi, who was still going to church and teaching Sunday school well into her 80s, she could barely see and she was still driving. I think we should probably have a limit on when, you're, when you can and can't drive, but that's another story for another day. But she prayed for me and my sister and my mom and my dad when we weren't going to church, when we were far from God, when I had never been to church other than with Mimi one time, and she dressed me in a suit to look like the, uh, the, the pastor. And uh, <laughs> cool little story, fun to look back on. But then after that, I didn't go to church. And my parents were into alcohol and drugs and, you know, just the normal things that people try to use to fill themselves, to fill the void that's going on in their life. And uh, when I was nine years old, I went to church and I gave my life to Christ. And then my sister came the next week as I invited her and she gave her life to Christ. And then we both begged my parents to come. And guess what? They said yes, but it was really just to shut us up. How many of you have said yes to something this week just to shut people up, just to shut your kids up? Yeah. Anybody? Your husband, maybe? Your wife? I don't know. Uh, just, uh, they just, just wanted us to stop asking. And so they went. But you know what? Because of the prayers of Mimi, my mom and dad, myself and my sister, we said, we need you, Jesus. We, we acknowledged that we needed him as our Lord and our Savior. And that prayer from a woman who was consistent and wouldn't give up and sought the face of God over and over again on our behalf, and not just for us, but for other people as well. And she, began to, she continued to teach and to love people and care for them until the day that she passed away. And I want you to know that that prayer changed the trajectory of my life. And guess what? I've had the privilege, as Pastor has said, of leading him to Christ. So if that woman hadn't prayed, believing that God would move on her behalf and see us saved, then maybe Pastor Troy doesn't get saved. Maybe we're not here today. I mean, just the thought, just like, wow, that, that's crazy. But her prayer was meaningful, it was powerful, and she was consistent, and it moved God's heart, and it moved His hands to put somebody in our life to share Jesus with us. My mom had migraines really bad, to the point where she would wake us up at night with her throwing up. And I apologize for being so graphic, but I want you to understand how bad it was that she had taken so many BC powders over the years that it ate the inside lining of her stomach. To this day, she can still not eat certain foods because they're too acidic or too this or too that, whatever it is that bothers her stomach. And uh, we began to pray for her. Now, it didn't happen the first time. It didn't happen the second time, but we stayed focused on saying, God, we need you to move on this. My mom's not even getting rest. She's not even even sleep. This is bothering every aspect of her life. And can I tell you that God healed her? She, I, I love doctors and I think God uses doctors and I think God uses nurses and I think God uses medicine, but God did not choose to do that this way. He chose to heal her miraculously. And now she has not had migraines for over 25 years where she was having them every single day. But it was through prayer. It was through consistency. It was through saying, God, we need you to change this. We know you love us. We know you are for us. We know you are a healer. You declare it and you show it in your word. And we need a healing to take place. And we stood on that and we believed that and we prayed it over and over again. Sometimes prayer is just about being consistent, about going back over and over and over again. Like your kids do. I mean, they're consistent. They go back over. Can I have this? Can I have that? Can I have this? Mom, 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 dad, dad, dad. Consistent. Go back over and over again trusting that your father hears you and will respond to you and it will be absolutely mind-blowing there were times in erica and i's life uh, as a husband and a wife we didn't know which move to make next like what what are we doing now like we don't have jobs or, or we don't have a car or whatever the case may be and we committed that to prayer oftentimes fasting like even moving here we spent time prayer, in prayer and fasting before ever making a decision to be here in Smyrna and, and be here at Victory Church. And it took time. It wasn't an overnight thing. It, was, it took weeks of prayer and fasting and time away of saying, God, what do we do? How do we do it? And God came through. And this has been one of the most rewarding moves, 
one of the most rewarding things we've ever done in our entire life. But it was because it was committed to prayer and we waited to hear God's voice before we moved. That's hard. Sometimes we want to move early. We want to move fast. But we waited this time. And we've made some mistakes. We've done things and made moves too fast. But I want you to know when you're consistent in your prayer and, and you'll wait on God for the answer, whether it's yes or no. Now, sometimes it's no, right? Like yes or no. When you do that, it moves God's heart and it moves God's hands in a way that nothing else does. It's incredibly powerful. And so I want to challenge you this week to pray at least five minutes. At least for some of you, that'll feel like an eternity because you're just now starting to do it. And for others of you, you can go longer. So go longer. But can I tell you this? Do yourself a favor and write down some things that you want to pray about, that you want to bring to God, whatever they are. God is not um, thrown off by what you bring to Him. There's been many times I've gone off on God. I've been mad at God. Now, He corrects me in that time of prayer, and I usually come out going, okay, my bad, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. I was totally disrespectful. That was rude. I forgot that you had already blessed me over here. Look at all these times you were faithful. Yeah, you're right, you're right. (laughs) Changes my perspective. He shifts it. That's what prayer does oftentimes, right? It shifts our perspective and uh, maybe not change our circumstance overnight, but shifts our perspective about what's really going on and what's really happening because we'll talk ourselves into things. But when, So when you're praying, right? Like you can talk about anything. This is a conversation between you and Jesus. The one who loves you for is for you and wants nothing but the best for you, right? So write these things down. I would encourage you to start out by thanking Him for the things that you have. Thank you for my house, for the shoes I have, for the food I ate, whatever it is. Thank you for my kids, for their health. Thank you for my health. Thank you that I have air conditioning or heat, lights, because it'll change your perspective before you go to Him with the things that you feel you need that are a necessity. And then go to Him with those things and begin to proclaim those things and and, and, and drive those things home in your heart and and and, and in prayer like god i need you come through my brother need you my mom my dad this diagnosis a job a car whatever it is the pain that's going on in my mouth because i have a tooth that's hurting whatever it is literally seek god's face spend time talking to god let me share a verse with you before we move on to worship right so this verse is in second chronicles Chapter 7, it'll be on the screen, but if you have your Bible, you can follow along as well. Chapter 7, verse 14, it says this. As a matter of fact, this is one of the uh, most looked up scriptures during this time. I thought it was pretty interesting. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, I will forgive their sins, and I will heal their land. We could use some healing, not, not just from the virus, absolutely from that. We could really use some healing in our homes. Like think about the things that are going on in your home. I could think about some things that are going on in my home. Some things that need healing. Some things that I don't do well. Some things that my wife doesn't do well. Some things that my kids don't do well. Some some things that we should change. Some things that we should do different. I can think about those things. Sometimes we get caught up on, on words. So let me break this down just really quickly. It says humble. If you humble yourself, right? Humility is just saying, hey, I can't do this on my own. I need help. Like I literally have tried and I've tried and I've tried and it hasn't worked. And I've given up that thing for a short time and then I go back to it, right? I'm triggered and then I go back to it. I need help, okay? So that's humbling yourself. I need, I can't do, I need direction, I need guidance. Humble yourself. That's step number one, right? Humble yourself, then pray. Okay, then pray, pray, bring it to God. God, thank you. You're incredible. I can't do this. I need you, right? Then bring to him the things that you, you, you're in need of and, and that are going on, that are bothering you or, or stressing you, the things that, that are in the way of your life being better or being, you know, fulfilled or with peace or freedom and bring those things. Sometimes it's just you literally praying, God, I need peace. The peace that you get said you would offer, the peace that surpasses understanding. I need that peace in this moment because I don't know what else to do. Sometimes it's just that. 
then pray. Seek His face on any and everything that is going on in your life. Then turn from your wicked ways. Now listen, you cannot turn from your wicked ways without humility and without prayer. And wicked ways, sometimes again, we get caught up on, on, on the words and we go, wow, I'm not wicked. But really we all are, right? Like we're all, we all fall short, as the Bible says, of the glory of God, the, the standard that is set. We all sin. And so that's the wickedness, right? So like the lie or the tea that I, 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 I spilled or I shared, uh, you know, the, the little things sometimes that we feel like, you know, aren't that big of a deal, like the eating disorder or the, the, the movie that we watched that we knew we shouldn't have watched because it, it triggers me to go then to the internet and look at other things that I know I shouldn't be looking at. Right? So he wants you to turn from those things. What does that mean? Run from them. It means cut off access to them. Right? So I like to use this one only because I know it is, um, it runs rampant and it's a big deal and it, it, it it's killing men and women um, from the inside out. And that's pornography, right? Like, so we need to cut off access to that. That's turning from it, right? So if you look at it on your phone, get something on your phone to where someone else knows if you looked at it and it tells on you, right? It holds you accountable or do away with your phone that has internet. Get a flip phone, like burn the bridge that takes you back. Okay. And so like if, if finances will go that route, if finances is an issue for you, if like setting a budget and staying fixed to that budget is a problem and you're living paycheck to paycheck and you're struggling. So then now what do you do? Come up with a way to burn that bridge to where you can't go out and spend impulsively. So cut your debit card up or take your debit card and give it to your wife and your wife and you put it in the envelope if if you both can't um, do well with that and you put the envelope in your house somewhere so no one else knows where it's at but where you can't just get to it at any point in time right burn the bridge that takes you back that's turning from your wicked ways and when you do those things when you humble yourself when you bring all of those concerns and those worries and the things that are going on in your life to god right and you turn, you're constantly fighting against the urges and surges of this life and you're turning from them, then God will hear you and he will respond to your prayer. There you go. There's the life that we need, that I need, that you need. I was praying this morning and, and I was just I was just crying because I'm like, Lord, this is so good and this is so necessary and this is so timely for all of us. I know it is for me and I know it is for you that we need this. We this is essential in our life. Prayer is a big deal. And so when, when we see it that way, when we see it as life-giving and we approach it in that, in that way from a humility, right? And then, and then bringing our concerns, our worries, our things, right? And then we're constantly turning to God. God, I need you more. I can't do this without you. God, help me to overcome. Help me to be strong today. Help me. Then I'll hear you because your heart's right. And I'll respond and I'll heal you and I'll heal your land, meaning I'll heal those people around you as well. Just powerful. Drink from that well this week, guys. Dig. Do the work. Do the work. Set the time. Write the list. Do the work. You know, it's, it's work to dig. If you had to dig a well, it would take you a long time. There would be a lot of sweat and you'd be dirty when you got done, but it'd be worth it because there'd be life at the end of it. And you could drink from it and it would be like, oh, so refreshing. That's what prayer is, right? That's what any of these wells will be once you get to the source, once you get to the life, once you get to the water. So refreshing and so good for you, for your, for you and your family and for those around you. And so do the work, guys. Do the work. Set aside a time, five minutes, write a list. If it goes beyond five, awesome. Keep going every day. Consistency is what's needed. Consistency. Let's jump into worship real fast. Let me take you to a verse. It's in Acts. It'll be on the screen as well. Chapter 16, verse 25. It says this, But at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing. Okay? Prayer always comes before worship. Prayer always comes before worship. Praying and singing hymns, okay? Worship isn't just songs being sang. It's an attitude. It's the way we live our life as well, 
right? But in this way, and, and we did this earlier, we do what, what we call at church praise and worship, right? We sang some songs glorifying, giving God credit and honor and glory and saying, hey, we need you and thank you for doing this, okay? So that's what they were doing. They were singing and the prisoners were listening to them. The people around them were listening to them. When you have a heart of prayer and a heart of worship, people around you are going to listen because not everyone's doing that. Not everyone is relying on, 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 a, on a God who loves them and is for them to, to bring them through. Not everyone's doing that. Maybe you look around. Maybe think about it. What is someone who doesn't know Jesus? Who do they go to in their, when, they're, when they have problems, when they have issues, right? They run to substances. They run to things to try to fill that void or try to overcome that that moment that they are in. And so, and so they're listening. People are listening to you. Your kids are listening to you. More is caught than is taught. Listen to me. More is caught than is taught. I don't know who originally came up with that phrase, but it is powerful and it is true. You don't have to tell your kids to wear your seatbelt. If you'll wear your seatbelt, they will eventually wear their seatbelt. If you'll eat your vegetables, they will eat their, you know what I mean? Like more is caught. Like over time, if you work hard, they will work hard. If you read your Bible and you pray and they see you doing it, they will do it too. You want an answer to your prayers about your kids loving Jesus and spending time with Jesus? They need to see you doing that as well. More is caught than is taught. They're watching you. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake so that the foundation of the prison was shaken. And immediately, all the doors were open and everyone's chains were loose. Oh, it's about to get good. They're, they're praying and they're worshiping. And now everyone around them's chains are off. Incredible. And the keeper of the prison awakened from sleep, seeing the, prison's door, the prison doors open. Supposing the prisoners had fled, drew his sword, and was about to kill himself. Wow. But Paul called out with a loud voice saying, Do not harm yourself, for we are here. Then he called for a light, ran in, fell down trembling before Paul and Silas. And he brought them out, and he said, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? So they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and you will be saved, you and your household. Wow. Not just you. Your prayers affect you. Your worship to God affects you and your perspective, and it shifts you here and here, and it humbles you, and it makes you grateful and thankful, and it, it makes you patient and more loving and more kind, but it will also do that for those that are around you. What prison are you in that you need to come out of? Hmm. What prison are you in that you need to come out of? You see, Paul and Silas were in prison. Prison's not a fun place. We've heard stories. We've seen movies. It's not good. Back then, it really wasn't good. It was dark. It was wet. There were rats running around. You barely got any food, if any at all. And here's Paul and Silas. They're in a prison. And they're praying and they're worshiping. What prison are you dealing with that you need the life of prayer and of worship? The two wells simultaneously will bring you out of that prison. Trusting God, knowing that you can't do it on your own. Saying, Jesus, please, this is what I'm struggling with. This is what I'm dealing with. This is what's going on. In my life, I'm going to turn from these things, but I need your help. I cannot do it on my own. And then acknowledging how amazing God is and living with an attitude and a, a life of worship, turning on worship music in your house and just allowing it to penetrate your heart and your soul and to create an atmosphere that says we are for God and God is for us. And, and, and he wants to see us succeed and he wants to see us win and we're going to win because the word says so, and I'm standing on his promises. It'll bring you out of that prison. It'll bring you out of a, a very dark place. If you are depressed, if you have anxiety, if you struggle with any addiction, if your marriage is struggling, finances, inability to get away from work and rest, what is it for you? Because if you will pray, and if you will worship, not only will God bring you out of that prison, 
but he'll bring those around you out of their prison as well. He says that they were around and God took the chains off and he opened the doors to the prison just because they were around them. Because people will begin to ask you questions. Your kids will ask you questions. Your aunt and your uncle, your mom and your dad, your grandma and your grandpa, they'll ask you questions because they'll see something different. They'll see a peace and they'll see a joy and they'll see a freedom that they don't have. I remember walking into church as a nine-year-old when I gave my life to Christ. The reason I did it was because I saw something that I didn't see at home. I, I saw a peace and a joy and not perfect and, and not exactly what, 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 what I would want for myself if I were to look back on it now, because you know, everyone's not perfect. They, they have flaws. They have, they have shortcomings and mistakes, but overall they had something that we didn't have. They, they had a joy and a peace. They had somebody to look to who had more ability than them had more love and more grace than them. And I wanted that. And so do your friends and so do your family and so do the people that are around you and, and they matter. And so will you invest in make, you know, digging the well? Will you invest in the work to dig so that you can receive life? But not just so that you can receive life, but so your kids can receive life? Will you do that, dad? Will you do that, mom? Your kids are counting on you. Sir, your wife is counting on you to be the man of the household, to spend time praying over her and your family, over your jobs, over your safety, over your security, over your finances and the rest. And Will you do that? Will you do that, husband? Will you do that, wife? Will you pray over your husband? Will you pray over your kids? Your kids need to see you do it. Your kids need to see you read God's Word. Your kids need to see you worship. Your kids need to experience that because that's what's going to change their perspective and shift who they are and who they won't be. pastor shared a story about going on a prayer walk around his neighborhood because he can't go to the gym and then Casey Ray grabbing his hand. It's a shift in perspective. She'll never forget that. She'll be able to look back on that and go, my dad doesn't just talk about prayer at church, but he does prayer at home. My dad leans into God and trusts God not to give a speech on a Sunday, but for his life to be altered Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Will you do that? Will you take time this week and do the work? Five minutes. Five minutes. Will you take the time to write down the things that you're believing God for so that you can remember them, but so also you can write on there, man, he was faithful, he came through, he showed up. It took five years, it took two months, it took one day, it took 10 years, but they're victories and I was consistent and I constantly went back to him and I humbled myself and I turned from the things that were not benefiting me and were unhealthy and went against what God said is good for me. Will you do that? Will you turn on worship music? Will you live with an attitude that says, Jesus, you're amazing. Jesus, you're so faithful. Jesus, I trust you. And Jesus, would you just use me to be a blessing to someone else? I wonder if you'll do the work, would you? Look, I'm gonna pray over you. I'm gonna pray over all of us. And again, once we get done, um, We'll turn this off and we'll go about our life, but my prayer is that you will, you'll enter into a moment of, of digging and preparation for the coming week. Jesus, we love you. We thank you. You're so amazing. We come to you in prayer right now. We know this moves your heart. We know it moves your hands. We know it gets you into action. And so God, I just, I just say thank you. I thank you for technology. I thank you that we can meet like this, that we can still experience connection through video and through Zoom and FaceTime. And God, what a crazy time we're in, but what an awesome time we're in. I pray that you would shift our perspective this week when it comes to prayer and how powerful that it is and how much it moves you and how much it's needed and how much it's life-giving. And I pray that you would help us to spend that time 
with you every single day. Be consistent with coming to you and just having conversation with you, just talking. I pray that you would help us to write these things down, things that we're believing for, the things that we need help with, and that, God, you would help us to, as well, turn from those things that we've been running to over and over again for comfort, that we would run to you for our comfort. God, I pray you would help us to turn on some worship music and just raise our hands in surrender, saying that we, we trust you and that we need you and that we love you and that we would live with an attitude of worship, being grateful and thankful for the things that we have. And that, God, we would come to you over and over again, not always, God, for things, God, but just because of who you are. That if you never do another thing for us, you are worthy of our praise. And so we say thank you. Thank you for opening our eyes to this. Thank you for shifting our perspective. And I pray that you would help us to see our families changed through the process of digging these wells. Digging them. Digging them. Putting in the work. We'll see our family changed. We love you, Jesus. It's in your wonderful and precious and powerful name we pray. Everyone said, Amen. Amen. Love you guys. We'll see you again next week.